I told the story a few weeks ago at the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia, to about 700 guests. And I have to tell you that I stood there amused and amazed by myself. And I have to tell you that I was in Atlanta <coughs> during the turbulent times of the attempt to integrate the University of Georgia. So I stood there feeling so elated, so out of body, because the president of the University of Georgia had invited me to give the Martin Luther King Jr. speech for the breakfast celebration. But I told them this story because it is true. And I will tell it to you now. I knew Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was a friend of mine. He was a friend and former student of my first late husband, Dr. Samuel W. Williams, professor of religion and philosophy at Morehouse College and pastor of the historic Friendship Baptist Church in Atlanta. At the urging of, we called him Daddy King, and Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, president of Morehouse College, Samuel and I drove down to Montgomery in the summer of 59. We spent the weekend with Coretta and Martin. We had been asked to try to convince Martin that he should move away from Montgomery. He, his home had been uh, bombed, his life had been threatened numerous times, and the King family just felt very much like he was putting himself in harm's way every day of the week. So when Daddy King learned that Martin had invited Samuel to speak at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, he pulled him aside and said, please take it, please go and talk to that boy. He needs to get out of Montgomery. He needs to come home. Well, we did go to Montgomery. Samuel did preach at Dexter Avenue. We did have numerous conversations with Martin and Coretta because the main thing was that Daddy King wanted Martin King Jr. to come back to Atlanta and co-pastor Ebenezer Baptist Church. So he was very, very much bent on getting Martin back there for that purpose. But Dr. Mays threw in something too, and he said, tell him to come. I need him to teach a course in religion at Morehouse. So those were the weapons that we used in trying to convince Martin that he should listen to his daddy, listen to Dr. King, Listen to everybody else that Dr. King had sent down there to try to persuade him to come home. And I have to say, and we took no credit for it because there were numerous people trying to convince him that he needed to come back to Atlanta. But I'm happy to say that later that year, Martin and Coretta did move to Atlanta. Martin joined his father as co-pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, and he taught a course for a semester at Morehouse College. Samuel and I were at our dinner table, finishing up our meal, <coughs> listening to the Huntley Brinkley News, when there was an interruption in the news. 
and an announcement was made. Martin Luther King Jr. had been shot on the balcony of the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. Like anybody else and everybody else that heard that newscast, we were stunned, in shock, and did not know quite what to do. Thursday was my choir evening. I was on my way to choir rehearsal. Thursday the 4th, Samuel had agreed to speak at the Jewish temple, the temple that you might have heard, those of you who are my generation, might have heard was bombed as well. We decided that we would stop by Coretta's home to see if we could be of assistance as we were headed for our various destinations. We drove over to Coretta's about a mile and a half from where we lived. We drove up in the yard. There was one small car parked on the right-hand side of the lawn. So we pulled up behind that car. There was a police car in the driveway pulled up to the steps that, lead, that led up to the house. We rushed to the door, rang the doorbell, Yoki, Martin, and Dexter came running to the door. Behind them followed a Caucasian lady, Isabel Cerny, whose husband was an art professor at Spelman College, but she had been giving Coretta some assistance from time to time in some way. The policeman, African-American, was sitting on the sofa to the left. Coretta had heard the doorbell, so she rushed down the hallway as well and invited us back into her bedroom where she was packing. So Samuel and I followed her into her bedroom. She told us as she packed what she knew of the shooting. She told us that Mayor Ivan Allen had called and had sent the policeman to get her to the airport as quickly as she could because she was trying to make the plane to Memphis. She said her sister-in-law was on her way, Christine. She said, I've got to get to Martin and I've got to do it in such a way that I don't upset the kids. So as we were leaving her bedroom, after having been told that the mayor had indeed arrived and that Christine was on her way, so she knew that wouldn't take very long, she, we went out and she said to the kids who were sitting at the table, I'm going to Memphis to bring your daddy back. We went out of the house. As we walked down the steps, Mayor Allen came up to me and asked if I knew the way to the airport. And I said, of course I know the way to the airport. What? Well, would you ride with Louise, his wife, I want to go in the police car with Coretta. And he did indeed get in the police car with Coretta and Christine. They took off for the airport. Now what I failed to sit, do in setting this story scene, it was a very dreary evening. Light fog and drizzly. 
And that was one of the reasons that Louise was pretty much ill at ease in a black community that she knew nothing about and did not know how to get to the airport from Corella's house. So I did get in the car with Louise. We took off for the airport. We never saw the police car after they took off out of the driveway. And what seemed like forever, we finally got to the airport. We went down the corridor. We saw people, people, and lights, television lights, and radio, people with radio, whatever. Just an assortment, but a large group of people when we got to the gate. The Eastern Airline, Eastern, airline was the plane that we that Coretta was planning to take to Memphis. When we got down to the gate, the Eastern Airline official recognized Louise and directed us to a bathroom, a restroom. Now I cannot remember if it were a female ladies restroom or male restroom but i remember walking into the restroom <coughs> louise and i when we arrived in the restroom coretta mayor allen christine and dora were standing in a huddle in the bathroom Mayor Allen looked up at Louise and me and shook his head. We knew then that Martin had not made it. Find the opportunity to hear history. We oftentimes have the opportunity to read history. You've just heard from a time and point in our lives that continues to affect our life and our future. And what do you want to say on behalf of Texas College, we appreciate you so much. With this certificate of appreciation, it says, recognizes Ms. Billy Sue Barron for your contributions to Black History Lyceum Program, February 2012. Your delivery of the Lyceum Address has allowed for the development and enhanced understanding of the college's theme of past to cherish, the present to embrace. We thank you for your spirit, your indefatigable spirit to Texas College and Higher Education. Award of this day, February 2nd. May God continue to bless you with you.